One of the vital functions of the United States government is to establish and maintain diplomatic relations with other countries. In every friendly and civilized nation in the world, there is an American embassy or legation. Whether it is Paris or Cairo, Shanghai or any other remote outpost, the most reliable and confidential means of communication is the courier service. Armed only with his passport, the courier, like a global postman, delivers the top secret dispatches of our government. Passport. Stephen McQuinn, Profession, Diplomatic Courier. Monsieur may never reach his destination. What? The man with the cane. Don't look now. He's on to you, monsieur. You got the wrong man, brother. He's been awaiting the arrival of Monsieur Stephen McQueen. That's you, no? Yes. I don't know him. Aha, uh -huh. as I thought. Quickly into the machine. Quickly. OK, drive me to the casino. <laughs> Brother, you must be hard up for customers. What's the big idea? This isn't a casino. There was a change of plans. You'll find Mr. Garside in there. How did you know I was supposed to meet Garside? Because Monsieur. I'm with you. Oh, well, do me a favor, will you? Be against me. I'll feel safer. For a spy, to feel safe is a very dangerous thing. Spy? Come on, now. Will you get off this cloak and dagger business? I'm an ordinary guy doing a routine job. Here, go back. Look, there's nobody in there. Monsieur, quickly. Garside. Garside. Garside, I'm Steve McQuinn. McQuinn. The dispatch. You've got to go after it. Contact the girl, Yuri Venet, at the casino. Get the photo. Bring a cab up the alley, will you? Of course, monsieur. Routine, ordinary job, I understand. You can trust Solov. Just what am I supposed to get from this Vinay girl? She got the goods to Mr. Regis. Regis? Who's he? he? Used to be in the king business. The opposition chased him out. Lives on a yacht now. This Amiris. Oh, you mean old Fatso? Our little friends need Fatso on the throne. Protect their investments. I, I got to stop them now, before the shooting starts. Take it easy, take it easy now. Look, how are you going to do that? Got to prove the emissary conferred with Regis. And I'm to get that proof from Miss Vinay girl? She's Fatso's girlfriend. Must be a great romance. Don't you get careless. Regis is playing for big stakes. Can I depend on you to get us to a hospital? Monsieur, you're addressing Mikhail Andrei Solov. The only royal taxi owner in Monte Carlo. I think I'll take a chance on you anyway. Help me get him to the cab. Le numéro 24. Noir. Vous 
du milieu. Troisième colonne. Mort. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Les jeux sont faits. Rien ne va plus. Le numéro 25, rouge, première colonne, troisième douzaine. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Monsieur Vinet, how jeux. good it is to see you again. Les jeux sont faits. Rien ne va plus. Le numéro 7, rouge. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Faites vos jeux. Les jeux sont faits, rien ne va plus. Le numéro 18, rouge. Première colonne, deuxième douzaine, passe. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Les jeux sont faits, rien ne va plus. Le numéro 26. Oh, croupier, I'd like to get a check cashed. I'm Steve McQuinn of the United States State Department. I'm sure it can be arranged, Monsieur McQuinn. Valet, je suis le directeur des jeux. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Les jeux sont faits. Rien ne va plus. Le numéro 33, noir. Troisième colonne. Troisième douzaine. Passe. Uh, I think somebody dropped these chips. It appears you are not superstitious, monsieur. Faites vos jeux, It is considered bad luck to pick up fallen chips. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Mesdames et messieurs, faites vos jeux. Les uh, jeux sont faits. Good luck, monsieur. Rien ne va plus. 23, rouge. Deuxième douzaine, colonne du milieu. Monsieur, mesdames et messieurs. Les jeux sont faits. Rien ne va plus. Look, do you think you can find this address? Mm -hmm. Oh, certainement. And don't drive over 30 miles an hour. I want to get there all in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, my daughter is not at home now, but since she was expecting you, she will no doubt return soon. Please be seated, monsieur. If you forgive the appearance of my home, the furniture is being renovated, uh, taken to the cleaners. My apologies, monsieur. Not at all. It's a beautiful home. Pardon? I say you have a beautiful home. Ah, you are very kind, monsieur. As you have no doubt perceived, I am a devotee of roulette, a systemier, if you will. I hope your luck has been better than mine. Oh, my dear monsieur, luck has no place in the matter. It is simply a question of mathematics, discovering a system that will win consistently. And yours does? Would you like a demonstration? It should be interesting, yes. You will forgive a father's curiosity, monsieur. Have you known my daughter long? Why, uh, no. Only since this evening. Then I see no reason to deceive you. She will not be back tonight, monsieur. If you remain long in Monte Carlo, you will understand the reason. Yes, I've seen the gentleman. Then you know. But you must understand my daughter is not entirely at fault. I myself must bear much of the responsibility. Since the war, when my factories were destroyed, I've not been able to give her very much. Uh, well, she's very lovely. It is not easy for a father to say these things. But this gross man with his great stolen wealth, is why I play roulette, monsieur. Why my system must win. And when he does, I shall take her away from you. You understand? I hope you break the bank. Uh, Thank you very much, monsieur. And if you come to the casino in the morning, you will see my system in actual play. I will tell my daughter that you were here. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, did your daughter leave something for me? Uh, uh, a letter or a package or anything like that? Pardon? Uh, no, nothing. I I'll try and make it in the morning. Thank you. Victor Walcry of Shindy. But I assure you, it will be your very last. You're a little late. You should have got me before I went to the casino. 
I have no designs on your money, Effendi. Simply walk quietly to the street. There is a car waiting there. Enter it. If your taxi driver talks to you, dismiss him. Remember, there are enough bullets for the both of you. Renee's Villa. Ah, Mr. McQuid. I am so pleased that you could accept my invitation. I could hardly refuse with a gun on my back. That's kidnapping in my country. A gun? I'm afraid that Faisal was a bit overzealous. I merely asked him to invite you here at your convenience. It will never be any more convenient. You see, Mr. McQueen, I am a student of human nature. I saw you this evening at the casino. I usually make my contribution when I'm in Monte Carlo. You asked to have a check cashed. It was granted. The courtesy extended only to a chosen few, as you must know. Yet you left the casino without cashing the check. That intrigued me, Mr. McQueen. Why should it? I just came down with an attack of good sense. Only after you replaced two chips of the three that fell. What was so unique about the third chip, Mr. McQueen? Maybe I'm just a petty thief. I know that business must bore you, my lovelies. Why don't you run along and take your rest? And sleep well. Except you, my dear Jory. It was very bad of you, my dear. But then you were always the difficult one, so I am not surprised. Fiesel will have you searched. A small embarrassment, my dear. Provided no incriminating evidence is found, you will be taken ashore. Otherwise... What did she expect to accomplish, Mr. McQueen? What did you expect to buy from her? I never saw the young lady before tonight. Really? You are incredible. You play at intrigue, a profession that was old in my country before your people even had a Bible. It is no wonder, I suppose, that you do it so badly. No incriminating evidence, Faisal? Then have her taken ashore. It is much better than she deserves. I think I'll catch the same boat. In due time, Mr. McQueen. You will want to be searched, too. A mere formality, of course. You know, the uh, Monte Carlo authorities will hear about this. Oh, please do notify them, Mr. McQueen. And while you are there, remind my old friend, the Prefect de Police, that he's dining with me here tomorrow night. I hope you have a good friend in Washington, too. They're going to get an accurate report of this, you know. Naturally. I have already cabled a strong protest of my own. Faisal, take Mr. McQueen below. You have my permission to withdraw. Thanks awfully. McQueen? You're some bodyguard, you are. Instead of following me, why didn't you call the police? Why? Because you could see I was in trouble, that's why. But I'm not a spy like you, monsieur. Look, get this through your royal skull. I am not a spy. But of course, monsieur. Routine job, I understand. I am discreet, monsieur. The soul of diplomacy. Yeah, well, look, Rasputin, do you think you can manage to get me back to my hotel without losing your royal way? Of course, monsieur. Monsieur. One moment, if you please. Well, Miss Vernet, I believe. I should like to have my $2,000 now. You made your deal with Garside. He's the one who'll have to pay you. You are the one who has the camera. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. I will not be cheated, monsieur. The camera vanished from my father's villa after you were there. The pictures were in it. You mean you got a picture of Regis without emissary? Of course, aboard the Samiris. There were at least four exposures in the camera. Now it is gone. Look, 
Look, I never even saw the camera. My father saw it right there while you were here. Then it was gone. You must have taken it. You know it's not true. If I had, they'd have found it. Of course, it is a mystery, monsieur. And the calamity for us all, yes? Yeah. You're out $2,000 and your romance is shot. It is not a romance. No, monsieur. Mr. Rodriguez is a royal cochon. He surrounds himself with beautiful women for window dressing. You certainly qualify there. Your beauty, monsieur, is a commodity. It is not of much value in a shop or an office. It's all that I have, so... You mean Regis pays you merely for your company? He likes his women to gamble and he buys chips for them. And if one is very careful, I am not proud of it. Why do it then? My father. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. You talk to my father. No doubt you heard how the factories were destroyed in the war and the family fortune swept away. No doubt he told you how he plays roulette in order to save Pujori from her fate. Only, of course, he never wins. System doesn't work, huh? Don't speak to me of systems. I have had enough to last a lifetime. He works out these little figures on this until they can never fail. And every morning he goes to the casino. And every afternoon, he, he comes back to sell another chair or another table. Did you really think the furniture was not being cleaned? You mean this is all that's left? Oh, there's my bed, of course. And my clothes. But those I keep locked up where they would sell those too. I tell you, monsieur, this is a disease. Oh, you understand, monsieur. If I had gotten my $2,000, I could have taken my father back to... Mm. Um, what time does the casino open? Five minutes to ten. That is when the system has play. Some last a few hours, some are finished in the first five minutes. I've just had a thought. You get some sleep. If I'm right, you'll get to Paris yet. What, monsieur? Le 22, noir, troisième douzaine. Mesdames et messieurs, faites vos jeux. Les jeux sont faits, rien ne va plus. Le 25 rouge. Mon système, pas pour vous. Oh, Monsieur McQueen, you did come. Now you shall see. Oh, some other time, Monsieur Benet. There's something very urgent you can help me with. But the play has just started, Monsieur. One must follow every play if the system is to win. Well, I want to get a good camera before I leave Monte Carlo. And I've been told that you can tell me where I might find one. Undoubtedly, Monsieur. Oh, well, uh, if, if you will guide me to the shop, I'll be very happy to compensate you for whatever you might have won today. Oh, I am a modest player, monsieur. My winnings would have been trifling, certainly not over 2,000 francs. And something for the inconvenience, of course. No, no, I will not hear of that, monsieur. No, you are a friend of my daughter's, and one can always play tomorrow. And I think I know exactly the camera you want. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I would suggest, monsieur, that you permit me to handle the transaction. I know this type. They think all Americans are millionaires or fools. You can say that again. Pardon? I say I'd appreciate your help. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Rasputin, will you please stop playing I Spy? Rasputin was no royalty. Get back to the hospital. Tell Garside everything's under control. Et France, monsieur. Oh, je regrette infiniment. Non, madame. Non. Monsieur, monsieur, s'il vous plaît. Je vous dis, c'est très... Il 
histoire de Ah, oui, monsieur. La voilà, monsieur. C'est 5 000 francs, monsieur. Price is 5,000 francs, monsieur. Fair enough price, I think. Fair enough if it's the one I want. Be assured that it is. Ask him if we can use a back way out. Peut-on sortir par la porte suisse? Non, je regrette infiniment, mais si nous n'avons pas de porte service. Oh. What do you say? There is no rear exit. Well, ask him if he has a roll of film to fill ah. this. Have you a roll of film for this Kodak? Mais oui, monsieur. Ah, voilà. Hein? Hein? Retreat is cut off. Attack. I have the pleasure, Fendi, of delivering an invitation to you to visit the Royal Yacht Smiths immediately. You know, someday you're going to deliver an invitation without a gun in your pocket, and I'll take great pleasure in belting you right in the teeth. Permit me to carry this for you. That's the replacement, eh? I have already taken note of your insolence, Mr. McQueen. Well, you'll have to pardon my bad manners. You see, I'm just an old Democrat. Monsieur Vinay, this is the first time you have honored me with a visit. More than once I have said to Jory, bring your father aboard. Faisal, your report, please. Your Highness, the girl took a picture. She hid the camera in a small shop. Here it is. So? A picture? I did not know that Jory was a photographer. And how nice of you to lead us to the camera, Mr. McQueen. Without your unswerving stupidity, we'll have never found it. Shall we see what kind of picture Jory took? <laughs> An excellent showing, Mr. McQueen. But perhaps a trifle too chauvinistic. Could you be trying to distract our attention? Surely you did not switch film on us. Very resourceful of you. One can underestimate the Americans a great deal. To the victor belongs the spoils. You may go now, Mr. McQuinn. Monsieur Venet, I am feeling magnanimous. I have decided to forgive your daughter for her treachery. You will tell her that, please. I am being generous, am I not? Monsieur Venet. I am not in the habit of being ignored. Answer my question. I am being generous. Is that not so? Monsieur, you are a cat. You'll never have a better exit line, Pop. Condense it. Condense it. What happened after the hatchet men grabbed the camera? We had an audience with His Royal Highness. Look, McQuinn, will you get to it? What happened to the roll of film? Regis exposed it. He exp... Well, that cuts it, old boy. All night long, I kept thinking old McQuinn will come through. <laughs> well, thanks for trying anyway, old boy. But I do wish you could have found a way of saving that film, though. Well, of course, I did switch the film. You did? Yeah, but Regis is too smart. He got both of them. But he didn't know about a third one. Did he, Pop? Yeah, put that battery back in so you can tune in on the conversations. You see? It's the only hiding place available. Maybe I ought to be an intelligence agent, eh? It was not easy to pretend to you by reading the royal lips, monsieur, but I did. Look, you're not kidding now. Now, that's the film that was in Jory's camera. That's all I know. Then it contains the picture you wanted? May I have my $2,000 now, monsieur? The moment the bank opens tomorrow, Jory. Then my father and I can go back to Paris. 
You will like that, won't you, Papa? Of course, my dear, if you are sure that... I am very sure. Well, this ought to settle Mr. Regis' future. Take it to Paris. Thanks a lot, old boy. Any time, any time. And do drop me a line from Paris. Hey, Rasputin, come, come. To the bus, Zeebo. I've got to get to Paris. I have a proposition, Monsieur McQueen. Yeah? I think you ought to have a royal spy on your payroll. I want to work for you. You do? Do me a favor, will you? Work for the enemy. Uh